Good morning. I'm in the studio today for a lesson. I was asked about this uh, some time ago, actually. You know, why have a lesson in a studio where you cannot see the ball flight? Well, outside today is a very cold wind, and it will be blowing very hard across the practice ground. So that's going to be a huge distraction to me having a lesson when it is cold and there's a two, two and a half club wind and the ball's just getting blown away. In here there's no wind. It's not cold. The other thing in here is with a decent launch monitor is that you can see the swing path out to in, in to out and you can see the face to the swing path and you can see what part of the club face you're using. And then with two slow motion cameras, we can see what I'm doing. And then you can come up with a resolution to however you're striking the ball far quicker and far easier than outside. Even if outside was warm and sunny and no wind, it would still be quicker and easier in here. So uh, I'm not going to show you my entire lesson, that would be boring, but we'll have a look at the figures and what we can learn from the launch monitor and how we then put a plan in place, give me some drills to do in order to fix my swing path and the way I'm striking the ball. As I say, I think it's quicker and easier in here than outside, and that's coming from somebody who loves hitting balls off grass outside. See you in a moment. So here's the figures from my last shot. 74.8 club head speed, not bad for a 7-iron. Ball speed, carry, total yards. Club path is 3.2, which means it is in to out. The face angle is also positive, 1.6. But the face to the path is minus 1.6. So that is a closed face, which means I hit a draw. The dynamic loft of the 7-iron was reduced to 23 degrees. And my shadow is in the way. So it shows that I'm now swinging it better to hit a tiny draw. The face is close to the path, the path is in to out. If we move along a bit, the smash factor is 1.38. Now the maximum that you can get is 1.5. 1.38 with a 7 iron is pretty decent. And then you've got the land you've got landing angle, you've got the amount of backspin. and a few other figures which I didn't quite capture but if you look at the line drawn on the screen the yellow is the ball path the darker one is the shadow you can quite clearly see the little draw right my lesson is over I've got the drill that I've got to do in order to improve my game but as you can see by being able to see the swing path the face to the swing path, the downward strike angle, what part of the face I'm using, it is much quicker in here to improve your game, especially on a windy day. Now James and I are very much old school. We like to see the ball flight because the ball flight tells the truth. But without a really good launch monitor and all of this information, it can sometimes be more difficult just watching the ball flight to come up with a resolution to improve it. Now I'm going to have a practice session now. You should always practice after a lesson. For me it's the same day and again I'm going to be indoors out of the wind, no distractions. But you know you could do it tomorrow or the day after. The place you don't go after a lesson is straight to the first tee because you'll find yourself caught between two stools the old way, which was no good, and the new way that you can't get to. So you have to practice your way towards the new way. 
So I'm going to hit some balls here. I've uh, what we've set up here. There is a driving range with a number of greens on it, and I just go to the computer and I select the green that I want to hit to, and I pick the appropriate club for it. But uh, it's still picking up figures here, so I'll be able to look at my figures and see if I'm going to get anywhere near what I was doing in the lesson. We'll have a look at that in a bit, but uh, let me hear a few first. So now I'm on the practice ground. You can't see the ball because there isn't space for it. But I'm going through my practice session now. I'm hitting into a green that's, I think it's about 150 some yards of this one. And we're putting for bird. And then the figures appear up on the top left. We've cut out a lot of the figures. Now if I want to practice different clubs, I simply go to the computer and I select a different green. And it will bring us round to that green and I can hit at that with a different club. Straight down the banner. A little shy with that one. So I can look at the figures after each shot and get some idea of whether I'm getting anywhere near what I was doing in the lesson with James when I had supervised practice where you're making corrections after every swing or being given a reminder of what you're supposed to be doing after each swing. And that one was pretty disgusting. It was either fat or thin, I forget. This was yesterday. My memory doesn't go past what I had for breakfast. But after each shot I can glance at the figures, I can see what my swing path is, what my face to swing path is. And see if I'm getting it correct or not. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be my foursomes partner. At the moment, you'd be doing an awful lot of chipping. But I can react to the numbers and I can react to what I can see on the screen and remind myself of what I'm supposed to be doing. Eventually, we flush one. So that last one, 160 yards, 158 carry, good club head speed, spin rate's a bit low, smash factor is good, and not a lot of curve on it. Now I've picked a par three. This par three is in Norway. It looks absolutely amazing. So I go through the same routine. And we've selected a few figures. Not all of them. There's a limited amount there. But you can see I'm striking it pretty damn good. Well, this is only supposed to be a short video, so I'm not going to hit 50 shots into the TV screen for you. But you can see on these figures here, I can see what I'm feeling I'm doing is whether what I'm actually doing. And if I'm not doing what I feel I'm doing, what it feels like, and I look at these figures, then we can make corrections. We can make corrections to the swing path and most importantly, the face to the swing path, whether it's closed or open or square. And also, whether we're striking down on the ball correctly. Now, all these things you cannot do by hitting balls off grass, no matter how good it is to hit balls off grass, 
and see a real ball flight. But as I say, it's windy out there today, it's cold. Those two things are going to be a big distraction to my lesson. Plus in here, I'm not hitting rubbishy old top flights, I'm hitting brand new Pro V1s with the Trackman data in them. They've, they've, they've got a, a chip or something in them that helps the Trackman on the floor here pick up what's actually going on. So I'm going to continue with my practice session, firing into this beautiful par 3. It'd be fun to play it in real life, wouldn't it? You know, it's set up 157 yards slightly downhill from this back tee and um, I'm having a lot of fun while I practice, that's the other thing. So uh, I'll hit a couple more for you, but cheerio. So the whole point of this is to become more consistent. To hit it well more often. Just dribbled off the side and I've managed to cut off some of the figures. But as I say, what I'm looking for here is a swing path that is in to out, like that, two and a half degrees. A club face which is about one and a half degrees close to that swing path. You know, we don't want monster hooks here, we want a draw. of no more than a few yards. And also to see that I'm striking down, oh, you'd like that one, wouldn't you? See that I'm actually striking down correctly. So I'm no longer hitting it thin. Yeah, very pretty. This hole's 157 yards, I think. It plays slightly downhill. And some really good ones amongst all this, which is very, very encouraging. That last one had a down angle of 2.6 degrees, which is absolutely perfect. And you can't do this on a practice ground. You cannot see the angles. Oops, looks like we're chipping. And that's what I find so fascinating in the studio. Is the fact that I can see angles. I can see what I'm doing. What I'm not doing. And we're chipping again. Let's see if I can finish on a good one. Nice uphill putt. What more could you possibly ask for? So face angle is two degrees closed. Club speed 76, lovely. Good smash factor. Spin rate a little lower. Down angle wasn't so great, but the club path was in to out a tiny bit. 